be here. I am so glad you are here on this uh, this snowy Friday night up here in New York City, but you're down in Florida, right? Yeah, it's actually a very warm day here. It's about uh, 70. Well, send some of that up our way. <laughs> We're just gonna hang on here for a couple minutes as people start to, to join us in the group uh, and sign on to listen to our live today. Today, we're gonna be talking about uh, some of the early warning signs that pet parents can kind of tune in for that show the beginnings of things that later in their lives may be cause for concern, but you know, really starting to subscribe to this model that we are seeing not only in our own health, but in our pet's health of trying to act preventatively and anticipate things that can pop up down the line with our pets. Um, so tune in, stay tuned. Um, one thing that I'd love to, for everybody who's out there, say hi, tell us where you're from. Um, we haven't done a live in a while and I'm really excited to be talking to you all. And if you aren't a part of our Facebook group, uh, CBD and Holistic Pet Advice, please go and check that out. Um, and another thing that you can also check out is uh, the podcast with Angela Artelino called Your Natural Dog, which Christina, you were actually a guest on the show that aired this, this Wednesday. And you were talking about, um, what your the topic was why there's a shortage of holistic vets. Ah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Can you give us kind of a sparks note about what that is? Well, I'm gonna actually rephrase it. Rather than why there's a shortage, speak to what we need to do to shift it so there's not a shortage anymore. And that's really up to you. Each of you who has is on this show, you are interested in some holistic approaches. So if you want holistic vets around, you go to your local vet and you politely decline most of what they suggest to you. And you come back and you show them how your dog or cat or horse has completely recovered giving, given an alternative and you keep working with them and keep talking to them. So not just an mm. ambassador for your pet, but an ambassador for holistic medicine. Um, basically, holistic veterinarians become holistic veterinarians for several different reasons. One is they were ill, conventional medicine didn't help, and they got cured by something holistic. That draws them in. The second, like mm. the way I got started, was by a client talking to me about it, and I was open to it, probably because the angels wanted me to do it. So I was right. very open to it. Um, and others aren't. So you have to, it's the luck of the draw, whether you are or aren't, um, that whether your vet is or isn't um, interested in it. So that's really the best step for, for them to do. The, the other way exactly. is actually there are a number of holistic, especially homeopathic vets who are out there now because they listen to a lecture that I did. Oh, yeah. Because I speak at veterinary Hello. conferences yeah. back in the time. Now, many more people speak, but I used to do that. And one woman, one yeah. vet came up to me a decade later and said, you know, I listened to your talk on homeopathy because it was the end of the conference and I was brain fagged and I just wanted to rest and relax. And I didn't really believe anything you were saying, but you were so enthusiastic and you believed it. I thought I'd look yep. into it. And she became a homeopathic right, vet. Right. <laughs> yeah, well, people, people will follow a lot, of, a lot of those who are confident and just say, say things with confidence, but you actually know what you're talking about. You, and for everybody out there who does not, who's not familiar with Dr. Chambro, she is an internationally renowned homeopathic veterinarian. She's a speaker and author. Um, one of the founding members of a really fantastic organization called the Holistic Actions Academy, which is a great resource for anybody out there learning, to, uh, looking to learn more about how to work with their their own pets holistically, um, and even to transition from that kind of Western style model that we are most subscribed to to something that is more integrated, more holistic, um, and exactly what you're talking about. You know, switching from um, not a shortage mindset, but but just bringing more people on board with this. Um, and I think that that really that topic has a lot to do with what we're here to talk about today, which is noticing these signs and acting preventatively uh, with our animals. So the, the real key is it's not just about the signs, but it's about thinking, really shifting our thinking in a whole lot of areas. That's often what we need to do is to change the paradigm, the principles that we're coming from. We have been trained by Western medicine, Western doctors, conventional veterinarians, and TV and media to wait until a symptom happens, <coughs> I'm coughing, 
and then take a cough suppressant and the little clock goes and it says, look, in 15 seconds, the cough has stopped. Yay. So we've been trained right. to treat each symptom and stop the symptom. So the shift to right. make is to remember that each one of us is born not just with our unique genetics, but also with our unique energy field. So our energy pattern is determined not just by genetics, but by how healthy our parents were or your dog or cat's parents were when they mm. bred and the mm. health during pregnancy and what trauma happened during pregnancy. So a lot of these right. things can affect your animals and we can therefore fix them because it's not right. all about genetics. It's called epigenetics. Right. So each one is born right. with an energy field. Okay, here's this energy mm -hmm. field and it's a pattern. It's like a template for your dog mm -hmm. or cat's life. And yes. with that template, there's susceptibilities. So some dogs mm. are sensitive to vaccines and they die when they get their first vaccine or they get really sick. Other dogs, it's not vaccines, it's diet. And they have problems if mm. they're eating any, even a bite of processed food. Other animals, they're mm -hmm. triggered by EMFs. So mm. the goal is to use all the symptoms that your animal shows you. And, and we'll give you these mm. early clue symptoms that will help you start sooner. Use these clues to try something different because we don't know what that trigger was necessarily. I mean, if it's a vaccine or maybe a move or an animal dies, we might think we know the trigger, but it might be something else. You might not know that the neighbors all sprayed or that the golf club sprayed and that it's a toxin that's bothering your dog or cat. So we don't right. always know what triggers this energy field to go out of balance. But here's the trigger, mm -hmm. here's the key thing. It's not the virus or the bacteria or the toxin that's causing the illness. It's mm. the trigger that's pushing the energy field out of balance. And the energy field wants to get back into homeostasis. It wants to get back into balance. And the only way mm -hmm. it can do it is by producing symptoms. So what we do right. is we use symptoms as clues that something's awry. Right, right. So before we go on, I just, for everybody who's listening out there, you used a word that we talk about a lot, that's homeostasis. And basically for, for anybody who's listening who hasn't heard us use this word before, this is, homeostasis refers to a state of balance. So in any, any biological system, there, there are a number of different mechanisms through, throughout the body that try and correct the body back to this line of balance. So for instance, we can talk about something like body temperature. If the, if the body temperature is getting too hot, it's too hot because of outside sources, the body will engage mechanisms to bring body temperature back down. If it's too cold, it'll engage mechanisms to bring it back up and so on and so forth. It's constantly happening and throughout various systems throughout the body. Um, and this, you know, this affects all sorts of different um, pieces of our, our health. Um, and there are, there are different ways that things that come in and throw it out of whack can then have a knock on effect and, and change, change through the other systems throughout the body. So being able to, to recognize when, when you're seeing those imbalances and try and help correct them and get back to the source of what got them out of whack in the first place. Well, and not even the source of what got them out of whack. That's not as important as simply getting them back into balance. Right. Because once the energy field is balanced, it doesn't, it's no longer susceptible to those problems. Right, right. Now it might be susceptible to some. I mean, you know, if a dog eats arsenic, you know, or warfarin, they're gonna have some consequences regardless of how healthy their vital force is. But for, right. for the average problems that we're dealing with, that's, that's the key is to restore balance. Yeah. And um, so the first step is we need to collect all these symptoms and we need symptoms. We need some early warning clues. So these are early warning signs of internal imbalance. Mm -hmm. Or another way to say it would be these are early warning signs that homeostasis is not present, mm -hmm. that they're out of balance. 
And these are things that we have come to accept as basically normal. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many of you, I mean, we've got a number of wonderful people listening. So I love that from all over. Yeah. And um, so, so glad to see you all here. So how many of you listening think that it's normal for cats to vomit hairballs occasionally and that you just need to keep them on laxatone or an herbal supplement to prevent them from vomiting hairballs? Right. Gummies. I've seen, I've seen dogs go on gummies for hairballs and, and digestion. I'm uh, you know, it's... and that, but so that's a symptom that's considered normal. Mm. That is a clue that the energy field is out of balance because mm. healthy dogs and cats don't, or healthy cats don't throw up hairballs. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Dogs, how many people think it's just, you know, a lot of dogs have a doggy odor and they need a bath every week right. or two weeks so they don't have that doggy odor. Right. Nope. Healthy dogs do not have a doggy odor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Healthy dogs and cats don't develop tartar on their teeth. Right, right. So you provided us uh, with a really fantastic list that um, was actually linked in the in the description or the the comment box here. Um, thank you, Amy. And it's uh, it's a good list that we can go off of kind of major areas. Um, here, let me just have this a little larger. How do we do this? Do, do, do. Don't mind me, technology. <laughs> so much fun. So, so. You're trying to make it bigger or something? <laughs> it's, uh... That's okay. So it's it's every part of the body. Mm -hmm. It's not, and now the, the clue, he, the key here is the things we're talking about are not early warning signs that there will be a skin problem. Sure. It's not early warning signs that your dog will develop inflammatory bowel disease. It's not early warning sign that there's going to be reproductive problems. It's simply these are skin symptoms like a doggy odor, flaky skin that indicate there's an internal imbalance. Right. Or it could be animals that just it's not a doesn't doesn't bother anybody, but animals that super, super seek heat or cold. Um, mm -hmm. I knew of a black cat once that the black cat's preferred place to sleep was on top of a hot tin roof when it was 100 degrees out. A cat on a hot tin roof? You got it. <laughs> Missy Williams. You're taking so, me back to high school drama here. <laughs> oh, there you go. So that's clearly out of balance. Hmm. That's not normal to have that. Right. Um, there can certainly normally be a preference for being warm or a preference for being cold, but mm -hmm. either one is often when animals age and we haven't been treating them properly, we haven't discovered how to keep them in balance, they will tend to get much more chilly when they age and want warmth and heating pads. And it's great mm -hmm. to supply those, but those are clues that they're, they're out of balance. Right. So, when you get this list, the entire list, which is, oh, I don't know, it's probably about 100 different symptoms, mm -hmm. um, things from a little red line on the gum, not mm. gingivitis, but a red line that comes and goes, gets bigger and smaller. That's an indication that, they're at, that there's something out of balance. So right. what do you do with this list? Well, I recommend that you start tracking the symptoms of this list from the moment you get a dog or a cat. So I've, I've been in, I graduated from vet school in 1980 and started doing holistic in 1982. Mm -hmm. And so eh, by the 90s, people were saying, write a book, write a book. And I'm going, no, there are plenty of books out there. But then I realized there was no good way to track symptoms. So I wrote the book, The Healthy Animals Journal. Right. And so this is a frame where you put a picture of your cat and dog in and their instructions on how to do it. Yep. And then there are different parts to the book. So the first part of the book is about general holistic things. It lists the early warning signs. It talks about dogs, Great Danes that are living to 17 and 18 or wow. Rottweilers to 20 or cats to 34. It talks about how long healthy animals, when you get that balance. And then it talks to you about developing a timeline and then a master symptom list. And always we pay attention to what 
in holistic actions we call BEAM, behavior, energy, appetite, and mood. And mm -hmm. I have it here as overall energy, emotional state, appetite, and thirst. So just general quality of life issues. And then you write down all the symptoms that your animal has ever had. Yes. And then you turn the bookmark over and you look at all of the early warning signs of illness and you check and see, are any of these present now? Mm -hmm. If they are, you add them to the master symptom list. And then you do something. Mm -hmm. You do something. We don't know what. Right. So in, at Holistic Actions Academy, we talk about HMDM, holistic medical decision making. Number one. For everybody who's out there, we just uh -huh. linked the book in the in the comments section. So if you're looking to to purchase this journal, it's really fantastic. I have it myself and it's super helpful. And also for anybody who's purchasing it, um, I'm not sure if it's if all the links are working right now, but my um, email is in there and we'll post it on here as well. And you can just contact me and I can we can work it out that way until mm -hmm. I get the links working. Yeah. Um, so then the book is full of blank pages. Right. So that you can put in the treatment. So you start by putting treatments at the back going yeah. this direction and you start by putting response to treatments this direction right. and you keep the journal until they meet up with each other. That's fantastic. Chris, Christina, I'm so excited that, that you brought this to us today because one of the things that we talk to pet parents about constantly at CBD Dog Health is the best way for you to track and have a really positive outcome from using a cannabis-based therapy like a full spectrum hemp extract is to be able to track those minute changes because you know, a lot of the times these these changes that you're talking about, these imbalances, they're very small and imperceptible over time, especially if you're seeing your pet every day. So being able to have it recorded that you can go back to last Wednesday and really see progress, you know, it makes such a difference in how you're able to to choose what's best and, and to choose what to do next in that step. That's right. And you may, if you're, and the key is to always look at all of the symptoms. So you mm -hmm. may be choosing CBD for arthritis, or yep. you may be choosing CBD for anxiety, both of which right. they're excellent for, or many other problems. And so you're sort of focused on that one thing. However, you may start giving the CBD and the anxiety is still there, mm. or the stiffness is still there. But as you look down your symptom list, you see that five other symptoms have disappeared because they're mm. on CBD because it's improved their balance, mm. but the deeper symptom is going to take a little longer to completely resolve. Right. So by focusing on all of the symptoms, you're able to more closely evaluate what's going on. And again, the most important is the energy level and right. how they're feeling, their quality of life, whatever mm. therapy you choose, if the quality of life is good, then you're moving in the right direction. If that's not good, if that gets worse, you're moving in the wrong direction. So even with CBD, some dogs are more sensitive than others to it. And so they may have a negative reaction to it that's very mild. But if you're tracking the symptoms, then you're able to sort of focus on that. So how do you know what to do? That's the HMDM, Holistic Medical Decision Making at Holistic Actions. First, you set a goal. Do we have to get rid of this symptom immediately going to the emergency room? Hmm. Or can we build health, restore balance, and let the body heal itself? So that's right. step one, set a goal. The second is research, coming to all these wonderful webinars that CBD Health puts out, um, coming to holistic actions, finding holistic veterinarians to work with. Oh, that's something that we have for you as well. Yeah. So we have a link for you in terms of so you, people go, well, go to the American Holistic Veterinary Medical Association to find a vet. Oh, I wish it were that easy. Right. But unfortunately, there's only like 800 members there. And there's probably 2,000. There are others that belong to this acupuncture association or this chiropractic or this homeopathic. So you have to go to all the websites, check out each one, whoever's near you, or mm -hmm. if you want to work by phone, check yep. out what their site looks like, mm -hmm. call them, see if they're, when you call the receptionist and say, I'm interested in holistic treatment, what do you all do? I don't know. Right, right. Then yep. that means that vet left or they learned a little bit and didn't continue doing it. Right. So it does take, so this article not only gives you all the websites, but it gives you um, 
I talk about all these problems and how right. to work best with a holistic vet and what you pet. can do. So, yep. Oh. So that's a very useful article for you. That's fantastic. Cause I, I totally understand, you know, a holistic vet is not a holistic vet is not a holistic vet. There's so much variation, you know, just as there in is in choosing our own medical professionals. Um, and if, if anybody out there is interested as well, if you're looking for cannabis specific or CBD specific consultation that is done online, our chief veterinarian at CBD Dog Health, Dr. Zach Pilitsoff, along with our founder, uh, Angela Ardolino, who is a pet cannabis expert uh, and, and is super knowledgeable in the field. They offer uh, online consultation, which you can book through cbdoghealth.com slash consultations. Um, so Excellent. So Carter, send that to us, send that to me, and we'll have that on the website, on our list on selecting. Yes. Yes, fantastic. We will. So we talked a little bit about skin, um, th things that can pop up on the skin. What are some behavioral things that might pop up? Um, as well, I mean, we really talked about the mouth, the skin, the joints. Um, yeah. So um, behavioral is, do we expect what's normal? What's healthy? What's right. a healthy behavior? Right, right. Remember, we're taking animals that from the wild, even though they're centuries living with people more the dogs, and we're expecting them to follow our rules. So sometimes their behavior is because of that. Mm. Sometimes behavior isn't because there's an energy field imbalance, right. but it's because we never trained them. Right. You know, people come to us all the time and they say, my puppy has so much energy. He's he's he bites things <laughs> and he runs around. And I'm like, it's like, how, they're like, how much CBD should we give them? I'm like, maybe, maybe none. <laughs> <laughs> Take them for it. Give them lots of exercise. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's perfect. How so, my dog not a dog? <laughs> however, if you have an animal who, if you had a dog whose energy was frantic, whose energy, mm -hmm. they literally never laid down. Dogs actually need to have two to three or four or five naps during the day. They should be right. sleeping about five or six hours during the day off and on. Mm -hmm. So if they're just frantic and they're constantly running and constantly moving, not just when it's playtime, but sort of constant, then that's probably over the edge. Mm -hmm. If you have a, a dog or a cat who's very hard to train, that mm -hmm. even when you go to training classes, they go, mm, wow, just really slow. Then again, there's a, an okay, and then there's way too much. Right, but right. It still could be a clue to you. So you would write that in the journal. So that mm -hmm. would be one of the early warning signs. Animals that um, have separation anxiety, anxiety in general. Now, it's perfectly, so I had one couple tell, they were homeopaths, both of them. And they said, um, you know, we, we want you to work with our cats because they're, they'd never play with us. Hmm. And I said, really? And um, so I started asking questions. And it turns out that they left the house at six in the morning. They got home at nine or 10 o'clock at night. They fed the cats, probably dry food, which is not good and for cats ever and not so good for dogs either. And then they were home all day Sunday and they expected the two kittens to play with them on Sunday. Well, the two kittens were having a blast playing with themselves because right. that's what they did six days a week. Right. So right. you have to step back and look sometimes at the context of the behavior, even mm -hmm. aggressive behavior. Is this dog being aggressive because kids are tormenting it? Is it mm -hmm. being aggressive because you've decided to use a prong collar in the wrong way? Is right. it aggressive? So you have to look at all the behaviors. But if any behavior is out of whack, that's a clue that things aren't going well. Food. Right. Here's another one, the GI issues. Mm -hmm. So healthy dogs and cats. <laughs> so in the wild, do cats always eat cardinals for breakfast and um, bowls for dinner hmm. every day? No. They, they eat a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this. They're changing diet every moment. Mm. So dogs and cats, healthy ones can change their diet and not have diarrhea or vomiting. So mm -hmm. that would be an early warning sign if you have a sensitive animal. Allergies in general, whether it's skin or digestive, a healthy animal is not limited 
to one food to stay healthy. Right. Right. And so those are, that's a whole nother set of issues. Would you agree that oftentimes it is the variety and the, the changing of, of diet, introducing new things to them that makes them less susceptible to imbalance in the face of something different? Absolutely. I, what I really encourage people to do is to listen to your vet, but then pause. Take a, take a moment, even if they're telling you you have to do this treatment or you have to do these tests, say, I need to sit and think about this a minute in the waiting room or in your car. And um, think, use your common sense. Forget what they said in a way and use your common sense. Does this make sense? If we do right. this, then what? Mm -hmm. And if this were my child, what would I do? Right, right. So if they tell you your cat has bladder problems, and it's been continual. We want you to put them on this bladder diet. And you, you think to yourself, well, let's see, fresh food is best. There are many treatments for bladder problems. You do some research. And do I want to be on the same food twice a day? Is that what's really the best? Mm -hmm. Would that be what I would do if I had bladder problems? Mm -hmm. If I had skin allergies and I was itching, would I want to try to heal from the inside or would I want a steroid shot to stop the itching? Right. Well, you know, I've got to say, there was one time where I had poison ivy that practically covered my whole body and I was miserable. Right. And I took, I had tried some homeopathic medicines and other things and it wasn't helping. And mm -hmm. I took steroid pills for three days, mm -hmm. got the itching down and then treated it holistically. And now I can rub against poison ivy and not have any problem. Right, right. So it's using that common sense. Most of you really do know what's best. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing is there are multiple things you can choose. CBD right. can treat a variety of many different diseases, but it doesn't work in every animal, mm -hmm. just like it doesn't work in every person. So you make a choice, whether it's an herb, supplements, food changes, CBD, acupressure, Reiki, all these different modalities that are available that you can do at home or you can purchase or working with a veterinarian who's trained in a particular area and you decide I'm going to try one right let's see how much improvement we get yes and as you said earlier you know these things are so much better in combination with each other taking a, a multimodal approach to these issues rather than just one corrective course of action. You know, not don't just go for one symptom. Come at it from a number of different angles. Oh, pardon me. You want to actually make sure you're looking at all of the symptoms, but I do recommend, unless it's critical, that mm -hmm. you sort of pick one or two things at a time to try. Because right. if you do CBD and acupuncture and homeopathy and chiropractic, you're not going to be sure which one's handling that joint problem. Sure. So maybe yep. do CBD and chiropractic. Yep. And yep. then you want to see if the CBD is really helping, the chiropractic should happen less and less frequently, should be needed less and less frequently. Mm -hmm. Or you may find that the chiropractic has completely fixed the problem and you don't need CBD anymore. Right. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And now, sometimes CBD yeah. can be used just as um, a supplement because the endocannabinoid system is not functioning properly. Mm -hmm. So it may be that in order to restore balance, some people in animals do better just in general. They don't have any illness, but they do better in general when they're taking CBD. Right. So often there, we, we, because of many of these things that you've talked about, you know, the, the genetics and then the way that, that our animals have been raised, whether it's the food that they're on, the environment that they're in, they, they have these deficiencies in their endocannabinoid system so that this, this system that is made to regulate all the other bodily functions, this master regulatory system is not really doing its job. It's not surveilling things and, and keeping them in that state of balance on the other basis. And so just by supplementing it with CBD and other cannabinoids that you find in a full spectrum hemp extract or another cannabis extract, um, it can really allow the body to do what it naturally would when performing at its best. And you will know 
if it's working by tracking all of these early warning signs, the little clues and the quality of life. Um, so it's that, that piece of listen, listen to your animals. And then I have two things um, mm -hmm. that I think are important. One is I encourage everybody to learn an energy healing method. Your mm -hmm. hands, your intention can heal. And I've seen it repeatedly over the last 40 years. Reiki is very easy um, to learn. There are many, many places that teach Reiki. There are Reiki groups. There are animal Reiki groups. It's the same for people and animals. You can sit down once a day for 10 or 20 minutes and offer Reiki to all living beings in your house. And that's all it takes. And you might prevent problems in the future. Or it might be Eden Energy Medicine or Theta Healing or um, Bingston Method. There are many, many that come up. Keep looking, acupressure, things mm -hmm. that you can do. See, I'm a sustainability person as well. Nerd, I'll say. I, you know, I've done cloth bags since I was 20. Mm -hmm. And so I've been doing this a long time. And the more we can use our hands as healers, our energy as healers, then we don't need to get mm. um, an acupuncture needle out of a paper thing and throw it away when we're done with it. Or we don't have to buy the homeopathic medicine in a bottle and had to be shipped and all of that. And particularly now during COVID, the more you can learn an energy method healing, the better, mm. because sometimes you can't get what you need because mm. of distribution problems, right. regardless of where you are in the world. And wherever you are, look to what your native, uh, the indigenous people are doing for healing there. Mm. So that, that's one that I just, I love being able to um, have people, encourage people to go that direction. Nice, Julia Johnson says, I'm an animal and human Reiki practitioner, such an easy practice to do daily. We just need to take time out of our day to do it, right? It's just about the intention and uh, taking that that active, um, intentional role in your in your own life and in your pet's life to to really just change change that energy field. And you can do it for the whole animal, the whole house at one time. You don't have to. People go, well, I have ten cats. Well, good for you for rescuing all those, but you right. don't have to do it on each one, which would take too long. But it's right. the same thing about making a fresh diet. It doesn't have to be hard. Whatever you're eating, you just incorporate that into, for most people, into their animals' lives. Some people do have to take extra steps, but then you're buying locally. See, from an environmental standpoint, dog and cat food is not good because mm -hmm. ingredients get shipped from all over. They get mm -hmm. made in this plant. They get mm -hmm. packaged. I just, I learned something new may not be right, but I think it is, that all kibble food for dogs and cats is now in plastic bags, mm. horrible, heavy plastic bags that can't be recycled. Mm. You could maybe make a mat for the floor or something, but not good. They used to be in paper. So right. they're, they're put into bags or cans, and then they get shipped out to all distributed to all the distribution centers, and then they get shipped out to you, internet by the Amazon, or you have to drive to pick them up at the pet store. Look at all the energy that went into that. Instead, you research your local farmers and you go to the farm and you pick up your chicken necks, chicken backs. Maybe they have some ground heart. Maybe you get big chunks of heart. So the organs and all of that are right there for you to get. And then you drive home and you bring your own packaging. They don't even have to be wrapped in plastic. You bring your own containers. Right. That's much better for the environment and much better for the animals as well. Right. And, it, you know, I think it can be very daunting for people to undertake that task who have gone the traditional route of the dry kibble diet for so long. But, you know, what we always try and encourage people is, you know, start small. There's no shame in in beginning now and, and starting to incrementally learn more. Mm -hmm. you know, just one little thing a day, one one fresh egg, one, you know, a little bit of some some sardines on, on top of their food. Every little bit counts. And the more you read, the more you learn about starting to really craft a diet for them. There's so many fantastic resources out there. I'm sure there's a lot on holistic actions about mm -hmm. start building those diets so that, you know, because yep. you, you also, you know, want to do it 
with with a knowledge of what what is going to be a complete and rounded diet. It's not just one type of meat. Like we're saying, it's it, it is it is varied. There's organ meats and and you know muscle meats and different things that are going to have different nutrients that are going to be important to be in there. Um, if there's anybody out there who has questions that they Sorry, like, I'm looking at something in the chat. So Amy Lynn said, "Stop asking why is fresh pet food so expensive, and start asking oh. why is dry pet food so cheap." Amy, I love that it. Is so good. That's so good. <laughs> great question. I think I want to get that framed. I love it. Yeah, that's great, Amy. And then Julia said they have five dogs, a foster dog, and two cats, and every morning they do Reiki. And it does make a difference in their lives. Wow. So that's Absolutely. a great example. Thank you, Julia. And she's the animal and human Reiki practitioner. But Fantastic. you don't have to be a practitioner. You can learn how to do it. And there are multiple other energy healing methods. So keep looking for them. Absolutely. That, make, that makes an, a big difference. <laughs> Are there any other questions out there? If you've got some questions uh, for Dr. Chambro while we're still here, we're going to wrap up pretty soon, but um, please uh, post them here. And if you are seeing this afterwards and you're watching this um, post live, go ahead and post them there uh, and we will come back to them. And I will also, we're going to show all of the places where you can find Dr. Chambro at the end here. Um, so what I do, just to let everybody know, is I do pet health coaching. I stopped being the homeopathic phone call vet um, when I turned 65. I'd done it for 35 years. And um, my passion is educating, teaching, and holding people's hands and helping them figure things out. So pet health coaching is you call me with whatever your problem is. You might have been doing, you might be a homeopathic practitioner or an acupuncture practitioner, and you've been had success for years, but somehow it's not working right now. Or you've been going to a, a really good holistic vet and you love them, but uh, you don't think things are going right. Or you're brand new to holistic and you don't like what the vet said, that surgery was needed for something and you wanna see if there's another approach. So I help you understand where you're at. Then I give you um, things you can do at home that are completely safe. And I then hook you up with a holistic practitioner. So you actually, I get you to one. And if that doesn't work, I get you to another one. Fantastic. I, so I it is definitely possible to get a dog off of um, dexamethasone and gabapentin for yeah. intervertebral disc disease. There are multiple, so you'll need to answer the CBD side. Mm -hmm. There are also braces that you can get. There's a company, Hero Braces, right. and, um, <laughs> that have back braces, and sometimes that can help. Homeopathy and acupuncture can usually resolve those actually fairly quickly. I've had paralyzed dachshunds who in two weeks were walking, and they hadn't walked for a month. Mm -hmm. uh, just with one with several doses of a homeopathic medicine. So definitely reach out, find a holistic vet. Now, what would you say about the CBD dosing? You know, we what we've been saying all day today is it's going to be different for every dog. And, and that initial phase of figuring out what is going to be the optimal dosage for your dog to manage their pain, to manage the inflammation, <laughs> Um, that's going to require some sensitivity and some some adjustments. So, using the journal that uh, Dr. Chambro was talking about that she's that she's offering here to track how much you're dosing in order to to keep them comfortable. Um, you know what we recommend is starting at one dropper. It's the average effective daily dose of our heel tincture for IBDD is made to be one full dropper. So, splitting that into two doses, but then really adjusting there over a period of a couple weeks. There are some dogs who are less sensitive who are on two full droppers a day. There are some who are very sensitive who are on half a dropper a day. So it sounds like you've got some room where you could push that upward limit. Just, you know, you shouldn't have to use the gabapentin, you know, unless you, you shouldn't have to, if you can find a stable uh, level with the CBD. And you and can always call and have a consult with them as, as well. Absolutely. So we put that information was is also there in the Facebook thingy, chat thingy. Um, I'm not a techie. <laughs> My hair shows it, right? Um, and then um, Kathy asks, since we talked about keeping them healthy, she has a 12-year-old 65-pound German short hair. 
And how much would be good just to keep him feeling good? What's sort of a maintenance dose? You know, that, that uh, is what we kind of designed our ease tincture for. So that's, that's a, uh, a, a tincture that's really made for those dogs that are coming into their senior years that are starting to have those a little bit of joint stiffness, perhaps some more food sensitivities that often come with older age. Um, and that is around nine milligrams per dropper. Um, so starting with that as a daily dose is going to just be really helpful, um, not only for their joints and stiffness, general inflammation and pain, but also really great as a modulator for the immune system. Start there, there. but Next. again, but again, be sensitive to how it impacts them. What, look at their, look at their energy, look at their behavior, look at how their, their skin reacts to it, um, and, and adjust based on what you see. Perfect. And then, um, Amy Lynn was asking about corporations buying up veterinary clinics. Um, oh yeah, the band field. You know, most of most many 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 clinics now are um, owned by corporations. I will say I had a conversation um, a few maybe a month ago with a veterinarian who works with one of these clinics, and she is has gotten upper management level interested in offering holistic approaches in a way that actually works. So we'll see, because there's a lot of benefits to the, the, big, um, to the big corporations. And so if we can get them to be on board with integrative medicine, then it would be really good. Um, and how do you know what clinics are owned by them? You, it's usually on the website, and, mm -hmm. or you just ask, mm -hmm. you know, who's the owner? Right. You know, and often it'll say who started the clinic, but Absolutely. they may have then sold out to one of the big clin to one of the big corporations. Right. And just because it's a corporation doesn't mean it's bad. One of your clues that it's a corporation is when you say, I would like to individualize the vaccination protocol and I don't want to do anything except rabies. And they mm. go, oh, no, you have to do it this way. Uh, that's probably a corporation, but right. some individual clinics are like that as well. So right. just since we mentioned that and uh, toxins, the only vaccine that you need to give is rabies. And that's legally, it's not for immune stim. It's not because of the immunity, but it's because legally you should stay legal unless they're ill. And then you get an exemption. And uh, that's only every three years. No other vaccines are needed. And now mm -hmm. they're developing COVID vaccinations for animals, mostly for the wildlife in the zoos. Mm -hmm. um, but do not start down. Don't, I would not advise doing the influenza vaccine or the other, but all the others are not needed. They mm -hmm. either are viral, so they give lifetime immunity, or they're not very effective. So you definitely want to stay away from that. <laughs> At the very least, you know, finding integrated veterinarians who are able to do a titer test for you so that, you know, you can, you're not over vaccinated, you know, that the, if you're going to vaccinate, then you at least know that you, if you're still under protection for whatever you're trying to, to stay off, that you're not redoubling it unnecessarily. Well, the thing is, and here's the thing about titer tests. Do we do titer tests for people to see if we're developed immunity to chicken pox when we got vaccinated as a kid? We don't. And yet you're being asked to spend a lot of money every, every year to do a titer test on your pets. It's not needed. Even, I mean, we don't even do one in people, but if you do distemper and parvo in dogs and pan leukopedia in cats one time, and if they're antibody response is adequate, it doesn't matter if it lowers mm. because their cell mediated immunity kicks in mm. and is there as long as you had immunity at one point. Now, right. so the only time you need to do titers is if you've got some fun show you want to go to or you want to be a service dog and they'll accept titers in lieu of vaccines. So in my experience, in most homeopathic vaccine uh, experience, vaccines are the most damaging thing that happen to animals. And people who are keeping the journal see that because every time there's a new symptom, they ask the question, what was happening recently? Hmm. Often it's the vaccines. Um, and Jenny asks about heartworm prevention. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't even understand how our dogs get 
heartworms. So that's step one. And um, on my website under free resources, there's articles and general health, and then there's one on heartworms. So it gives you the whole heartworm cycle and then it tells you what the heartworm prevention really does. It doesn't prevent, it's just a morning after pill. Mm. So the heartworm prevention comes in and kills the migrating stage larval stages at, before they get to the heart. Mm -hmm. And so the bottom line is, and if a mosquito experiences cold weather for more than a few days, it interrupts the heartworm cycle. So the recommendation for heartworm prevention is very individualized. How many mosquitoes are around? How often do you see a mosquito on your dog? Is it a little dog that basically goes outside to pee and comes back in and is in your arms all the time? You know, you may not need any heartworm prevention at all. Right. How, how many heartworms are in your local area? So it really is an individual, but you can read more about that on my website and also, also at Holistic Actions. Great. Very cool. All right. Is there, if there's anybody else out there who's got a question, uh, act fast. Um, I just want to also um, put up on the screen this, uh, this slide that's got all of your contact information here. Let me move that one question that's on there. So these are all, all the places where you can go and find Dr. Christina. Uh, her website is here. Her email is on there as well, as she said, where you can uh, request that book. Um, and then it's also posted in the comments to the side there. We've got that blog we talked about, how to choose an integrative vet, and uh, the Holistic Actions Pet Health Academy. And Christina said that Krista Fox is very helpful with her CBD questions. We um, love Krista Fox. Krista Fox is super, you know, she's a fantastic writer. She actually has penned a lot of our most recent blogs and articles. Um, she's a, you know, she's a registered veterinary technician who's working not only in that field, but also on the retail side and her knowledge of cannabis based therapies is fantastic. So, you know, I cannot, um, speak more highly of Krista Fox. She's such a well-rounded person, um, in terms of her knowledge of pet health. And then in terms of the acupuncture that's being done for the dog with the disc problem, um, you need to make sure that that acupuncturist is really treating the whole animal and working at restoring balance, not mm -hmm. just treating a few points for the back. Right. So it's tricky because sometimes people learn just a little bit of acupuncture and they're not doing tongue diagnosis and pulse diagnosis. Right. On the other hand, sometimes when you have pathology like that, you do need to be doing it once a week. Right. So it's a little, you know, I'm not saying she's not doing a good job. I'm just saying be aware when it has to be repeated frequently. And there's also drugs going on. So things, the holistic has to get treated more, but right. um, definitely have a conversation. And thanks, you're doing a great job. You're doing CBD, you're doing the drugs and you're doing yeah. acupuncture. So, right. you know, you really are working that way. I was speaking with a, another veterinarian, Dr. Lisa Mason, who's also in Florida, and she she specializes in rehabilitation and chiropractic. And, you know, one of the things kind of to your point that she mentioned is oftentimes we we have so much compensatory pain from these these main problems that, you know, you, you have to look elsewhere. You know, what else is coming up? Really tracing it back to the source and and like you said, treating the whole problem. Um, so and writing a timeline where you go back and write everything that happened, which is right. part of part of keeping a journal. And by the way, you don't have to buy my book to keep a journal. I've got an article there on my website about keeping a journal. You can make it up and do it yourself. And I have either the print version, um, which I showed you, but also there's the dog ebook and the cat ebook, and those are newer. And the text part you keep on your computer, you don't print it and you just print the part that has the, the bookmark and the things that you, the places you write. So that makes it uh, better for the environment. Awesome. <laughs> Great. Um, says, and switching, okay. switching to different and better foods is good, Karen. But the next step is to start adding in small amounts. Steve Brown in his newest book, um, something, the canine ancestral diet, I can't remember the first word. Um, and he has plenty of stories of people who were, who added a fresh meal once a week, just like you were saying, 
added a fresh meal once a week and had miracles happen. Right. So it, it's like, whether you do a lot or a little, just, you know, keep, keep on moving, keep on researching diet. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much for, for being with us today, Dr. Chambro. I've, I've learned a lot and I'm, I'm sure that all of our guests have been really happy to hear you talk. Um, Dr. Christina is a member of our, our board of advisors at CBD Dog Health. We're so grateful to have her. You can check her out on all these places here that we listed, as well as on uh, the podcast, Your Natural Dog with Angela Artelino. That episode came out this week. You can get that on Spotify, Apple Music, Google, everywhere. And um, as you can see, Dr. Christina is uh, super easy to find. So thank you again so much for coming. I love it. Thank you for doing these podcasts and thank you everybody for coming. And for those of you who listen to this afterwards as well, thank you for your commitment to your pet's health and for being willing to think outside the box and for being willing to not be brainwashed by the veterinarians who were brainwashed by how they were taught. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend. Happy Friday. Stay warm or stay stay cool wherever you are. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good night. Take care. Bye now.